So here is the outline of chapter 24. Uh, we will introduce the variable called electric potential, and then also introduce something like uh, electric equal potential surface, something like the something related to the uh, electric field lines. Yeah, and uh, the potential due to charge particle, which means that uh, we will also try to uh, calculate the electric potential generated by yeah similar structures as before. But before we, we try to calculate the E field generated by this structure, but now we try to calculate the, uh, the uh, electric potential instead. So yeah, more or less like this. Okay, so here we introduce the variable called the electric potential. Electric potential usually denoted as V, as V, capital V. At point P, in the scalar field of a charged object is this one. V equals negative W infinity over Q naught or U over Q naught. <laughs> Maybe you feel uh, what is W infinity or the, what is U. If you have learned physics one or yeah, or in high school physics, you know something called the potential energy or the work done or the work done. Okay, so here it means that the W infinity means the work that you've done by the electric force on a positive charge, where it brought from infinity distance to P. Uh, yeah. So suppose you place the, a charge uh, Q0 at infinitely uh, far away, then the Coulomb's force will be tends to zero because you know F equals uh, K times uh, Q0 uh, Q over R square or E equals something like this. So if R tends to infinity, this electric field will be zero. So if we just try to move this Q0 close to another charge object, then you need to do some work. This work, uh, so you need to do some, oh, sorry. You need to do some work to put this from infinite far away to somewhere here. So this is called W of infinity. And we take the negative sign, take the negative sign and divide it by Q0. Because if Q0 is larger than then the, the work done is a proportional increase. We don't want this Q0 value inference this this way, so we just normalize it by zero, uh, uh, Q, Q zero. Or in other words, uh, yeah, here, U is the potential energy. U is the potential energy. So potential energy is actually the negative work done, negative work done. So it's somehow like in mechanics, you know, uh, suppose this is a floor and then this is height, you know, uh, this this uh, potential energy will be mgh uh, mgh uh, this uh, this object has a mass of m so the potential energy will be uh, mgh so you need to do some work to put this object from the floor to height h so you you give it some uh, potential energy so you need to do some work for it somehow like this Okay, so, but this case is for the, for the charge object within the electric field. So, um, yeah, so we can just multiply this term to here. So we'll get U equals QV, so nothing special, I think. Okay, in here, we try to have some more uh, equation looks tedious, but actually it will be fine. Uh, because it's just tell you that, uh, if we have just say, just say, uh, e, uh, also we use the mechanical case to say, uh, if we, if we have an object H1 here, H1 here, we have an object here, M with max M. And if we try to move it to, to here, uh, put it from here to here. 
then at the beginning, the potential energy U1 is uh, mgh1, and then at the end, it, it has the potential energy of uh, mgh2. So you need to do the, the work is uh, somehow like mgh2, uh, mgh2 uh, uh, minus mgh1. So the work done by the gravitational force is negative of this value. And the potential energy difference will be U2 minus U1, which is uh, MGH2 minus MGH1. And the, uh, and the work infinity, which is, which means that uh, is done by the gravitational force will be, will be negative U, something like that. Of course, you need to do a work, which is uh, actually U to put this object uh, higher. Okay. So we have delta U, which is, uh, which is QV2 minus QV1, some, some, or QVF minus QVI. Oh, this mean uh, final, uh, this mean initial. And of course, the work done by the electric force will be negative, uh, del of del uh, negative delta U. So it is nothing special. And uh, yeah, and of course, and of course, if we have a uh, conservation of mechanical energy, which means there is no uh, friction force or no energy loss in between. For mechanical system, usually conservation en of energy is not, or uh, conservation of mechanical energy usually or sometimes doesn't work because sometimes there will be friction force, there will be losses uh, in between, but here, we can more generally assume that there will be conservation of energy, the, uh, conservation of mechanical energy, which means that the uh, K plus U, K is the kinetic energy, uh, kinetic energy, U is the potential energy. Usually we can assume, we can assume uh, this kind of, uh, this is the total mechanical energy. Uh, will be, will conserve, will conserve. Uh, yeah. So in that case, which means that if we have conservation of mechanical energy, which means that for the initial kinetic energy plus the kind, uh, initial, uh, potential energy will be the same as the kinetic energy at the final stage and the potential energy at the final stage, which means that if we just move over, uh, make it like minus, uh, uf minus ui. Just move this term to here and then move this term to here. We have a kf minus ki, something like that. So this is, so this will be delta k. This will be minus delta u. Yeah. So, so we will have delta k equals minus delta u. Yeah. Which means that, uh, suppose we have conservation of mechanical energy, then if the potential energy decrease, then that kind of energy will con, uh, will be converted to, uh, kinetic energy, have a larger kinetic energy and the vice versa. Mm, yeah. So, yeah. So here, if, yeah. So this case is like, if we do some work to a system, which means that the kinetic energy is not conserved, uh, the, 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 sorry, the mechanical energy is not conserved anymore. So in, in this case, uh, we have additional uh, work applied to the system. So we add this term here, add this term here. But yeah, actually we, we, we seldom use this in this course. <laughs> yeah, so let's see a, a simple sample problem to demonstrate this uh, concept. Okay, so here, so electrons are continually being knocked out of air molecule in the atmosphere. Uh, uh, this is the uh, 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 by cosmic ray. Cosmic ray 就是一些宇宇宙的射线啊，宇宙射线。
是比如呃、uh, ，just like some kind of a gamma ray or, or X ray something like that. So coming from which means some、uh, high energy particle or high man high energy EM wave, and and the electrons of the molecule will be knocked out. So、uh, once we this each electron experience an、uh, electrostatic force. F due to the electric field that is produced in the atmosphere by、uh, charged particle already on Earth. So some introduction. So look so lengthy.、Uh, and the Earth's surface of the electric field has the magnitude E equals one hundred fifty nano、uh, newton per coulomb. <laughs> nano per coulomb. So we have a E field pointing downward, which is.、Uh, Which is 150 newton per coulomb, and is a directly downward.、Uh, directly downward.、Uh, what is the charge?、Uh, what is the change delta U in electric potential energy of a released electron when the electrostatic force causes it to move vertically upward through a distance? So distance d is、uh, 520 meter. Through what potential change does the electron move? Okay, so in in mechanics, you if you still remember, W equals F dot d. So the force, the force dotted with the with the displacement will be the work done. If、uh, if the work、uh, if the force is not uniform, then you need to do an integration like W equals integration of S F dot d as something like that over a Over a、uh, path, so it is a line integral. A line integral. We'll face it in the second half of this semester、uh, when we learn the、um, when we learn the、uh, magnetic yeah, magnetic magnetism. Then we will use quite a lot of、uh, the line integral, mainly for the、uh, Ampere's law and also the Faraday's law in the Maxwell equation. But, Yeah, so 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 just now, and、uh, now the the force is、uh, uniform. We just、uh, use the simple product. Is in the product is okay. So, as we know, this force is generated. This force is generated by the the E field. So F is nothing but Q times E, Q times E dot with、uh, D. Okay, so now we consider the charged particle is a is an electron is an electron, which means that the force have a direction opposite to the E view, to the opposite to the E view. So yeah, like this. So E dot E dot d E dot d will be a negative number. Uh, e dot d will be a negative number, and then q is also a negative number, so it turns out to be a positive value. And uh, yeah, and uh, and as we know, e dot d is in opposite direction, which means that it is like e q times e times d cosine one hundred and eighty degree. So this one is a negative one, so we have a negative q e d. And we can substitute the numbers minus this is this is an electron, so it is the negative one point six times ten to minus nineteen times the E field is one hundred and fifty, and then one hundred and fifty times the distance is five hundred and twenty. So this is. This is one point two times ten to minus fourteen joule.、Uh, yeah, so this is the work done. The work done, and then it asks you what is the potential change.、Uh, what is the potential change?、Uh, the potential change will be、uh, will be negative W, which is negative one point two times ten to minus Fourteen joule. Okay, so this is the 
the answer to uh, this one, to this one. Okay, so would, uh, through what potential change does the electron move? So we can simply calculate it by delta V equals delta U over Q. So this is uh, uh, negative 1.2 times 10 to minus 14 over minus 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 equals 4.5 times 10 to the 4 uh, volt. Okay, so which is a quite a large potential, 45 kilo volt, uh, Okay, yeah. Which means that uh, this is VF, this is VF, this is uh, this is VI, which means that VF is higher than vi here this is the positive value so vf minus vi is high and usually you know that uh if the electric field is pointing downward which means that uh, this side is at the higher uh electric potential than than this point okay so this is just a uh simple simple one okay so if any question, just uh, leave it in the comment or can try to keep raise hand, something like that. Okay, so next we would like to introduce the concept of uh, equal potential uh, surface, which is related to the uh, electric field lines. So here, uh, adjacent points that have the same electric potential form, form an uh, equal potential surface, which can be either an imaginary surface of a real physical surface. Okay, so we try to uh, connect, we try to connect the point, uh, of course, in JSON, uh, adjacent points that have equal po uh, electric potential, then it will form a surface, then this surface is called a equal potential surface. Uh, just like when you see a map, you can just see something like, uh, maybe, uh, in a map, just say, uh, you can see some line, which is, uh, with uh, equal height, equal height. So you can see, uh, this point maybe, uh, uh, this point is darker. So maybe, uh, this, this is, uh, uh this demonstrate that, oh, this is uh, higher than, uh, 200 meter. Uh, this is something like uh, 100 meter. Uh, this is like zero meter. And maybe uh, it will demonstrate something like that. So, so you see, oh, this is a small hill. Uh, this is the peak of the hill. And then, uh, so this line is called the equal height uh, lines. And here, this is a 3D world. So we try to uh, connect uh, on that adjacent points that have the uh, same electric potential. And the surface will be called uh, uh, equal potential surface. Okay. So yeah. So here we have a V1, V1, V2, V3, V4, four equal potential uh, surfaces. So it says the work done by electric field on a charged particle as the particle move from one and to end the, to the other path, uh, one and two is zero. So you can see here, you can see here. So this is V1. So for path one, it moves from a point on V1 to another point on V1. So if a charged particle moving uh, within, within, uh, the same, uh, electric, uh, equal potential surface, then no work done, no work done here, no work done here. Yeah, no work done here. And for V2, uh, and for path two, path two, 
And from here, V3 moving out and then moving back to V3. Still no uh, uh, work done for path two. So it doesn't really matter the, the path, uh, whether it is entirely on the same uh, equal potential, uh, equal potential surface. It only met, the only matter thing is that the initial point and the final point, the initial point and the final point. It is just we have, uh, considered here is delta u, delta u is, yeah, delta u is only related to the initial potential and the final potential. So this is, what is that? So, so here, even though this charge particle moving out from V3 and then moving back, then the work still, uh, is still uh the net work done is still zero even though for some point will be positive some point is negative and then they finally cancel perfectly and then and then uh, because each of the this point begin and end on the same equal potential surface and thus there's no net uh, change in potential and then the work done as the charge particle move from one end to the other path uh, to the other of path three and four is not zero because for path three, it moved from V1 to V2. And then for path four, still from V1 going over and then going back uh, to V2. And so, so uh, the work done for path three and four are not zeros. Uh, but has the same value, but has the same value, even though the path are different, but it only counts for the, uh, electric potential of the final point and the electric potential of the initial point and take the difference. Uh, yeah. So that is path three and path four connects the same pair of uh, equal potential surfaces. So this is, uh, simple okay so here uh, here comes some uh, horrible stuff <laughs> and so here it try to uh, define the word uh, electric potential difference between two points with a line integral uh, with a line integral it is similar to what i mentioned uh the 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 the, the, the work done here the work done here so here is, yeah, we have the electric potential difference is the negative of a line integral of E dot ds. So in calculus class, you probably know uh, how to integrate something like uh, integrating of uh, f of s dx from maybe from uh, a to b. So you know, uh, you try to find the antiderivative of f of x. And then, which is like uh, f of x, capital F of x. And then you evaluate it from a to b, which means that you try to uh, substitute f of b here, where f of b and minus capital F of a. So it is pretty much it. So here, it is a little bit different. It is a little bit different. So you try to consider somehow like here, you can see we have electric field, electric field all over the space. And then we define a path from I, from point I, the initial point to the final point. And in that case, just say for this point, for this point, of course, this, this path is a curvature not actually a, a line. Uh, so in that case, we will also assume that E is not uniform over this path, but actually we can just try to cut this path into many, many small segments, into many, many small segments like this. Okay, so for every small segment, we can assume that every Every segment is a straight, uh, is a straight line 
and at that point the e field is uniform so that we can try to simply calculate for example this part uh the uh delta v delta v will be will be uh uh will be e uh e dot with negative uh, ds dx uh, or delta s or delta s something like that something like that because uh just mentioned that uh w will be f delta w will be f dot delta uh, delta s or yeah or maybe i just use d instead d d s or maybe i can also use a d here d v d s d is just delta so dw is uh f dot d s and you know uh uh du du is negative dw and dw uh yeah, dw is uh so it is a uh, negative f dot d s okay something like that and uh, so we have a dv will be du over over q over q uh, or let's say this is q zero so we have q zero here so we have a uh, negative f dot ds all over q zero but you know but you know f f is actually q zero uh e this is the definition of the e view so f over q zero is nothing but e so we have so we have a negative e dot ds here so so for every part for every part the the small uh, potential difference is actually negative e dot ds so just like what we work in single variable integration uh, if we can calculate every part independently like this then we can just add all of them together so that we can find the total potential difference between uh, vi and vf so we know that vf uh, minus vi is nothing but uh, the summation of uh, uh, minus e dot ds something like that and of course we will we have infinite many infinite many of that so this is nothing but the Riemann sum and we can simply write it as the integral negative e dot ds so this is actually not so horrible this is not actually not so horrible and uh, yeah okay so sometimes we will just uh just uh, write the potential difference instead of vf minus vi vf minus vi or we or we can simply uh, assume that uh, vi is zero then the v final will be will be nothing but v so we have uh, this expression so in high school physics uh, you know uh, you have London uh, line integral of course even though uh, even you 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 should you you might not have learned the single variable uh, calculus so in high school physics usually all it will be all the way uniform so in that case uh this line integral if we assume that uh, the e view is uniform over the space then delta v will be nothing but minus e delta x delta x is the distance is the distance between the initial point and the final point and the e is the e component uh parallel parallel to the to the path and of course the si unit si unit is very important is uh, v over m v over m for e and uh yeah the si unit for voltage so v is 
potential difference, or in circuit theory, we will call it voltage. Voltage. So the SI unit for this one is volt. Volt V. So many students doesn't uh, cannot distinguish the voltage and the volt. Voltage is the variable. Is the variable. Volt is the SI unit for the voltage or the potential difference or the potential the electric potential. And uh, yeah, so in chapter twenty two, we know that the SI unit for E. The SI unit for E is uh, Newton over Coulomb. So as now we know that delta V, delta V has SI unit of V, and then this is SI unit of uh, E, and then this is uh, delta X. Delta X is a distance, so the SI unit should be meter. So the SI unit for E will be V over M, V over M. So both are correct. If you try to write it in the quiz or exam, both are correct. Okay, so, so let's see another uh, sample problem. So here, two points I and F, I and F. I is here, F is here. This is I, this is F. In a uniform electric field, E, electric field E, the point slides on the same electric field line, not shown. Mm, line on the same electric field line. So electric field line. So it already tells you that our electric field line is uh, shown uh, per, per uh, so uh, vertically, uh, vertically, downward, pointing downward. Of course, uh, yeah, it's on the same uh, electric field line and are separated by a distance d. Separated by a distance d. Yeah. Okay. Find the potential difference Vf minus Vi by moving a positive charge Q0. Oh, this is a positive charge uh, Q0 from I to F along the path shown, which is parallel to the field direction. So E is pointing downward. The distance also pointing downward. Okay, so by making use of the Vf minus uh, Vi equals uh, negative I F e dot ds. So actually, we don't necessarily need to write the integration, but just let you uh, familiar with it. Uh, yeah, just let you know uh, it is not that difficult. Okay, so here we have e, e pointing downward, ds also pointing downward, which means that e dot ds is nothing but e ds. So uh, it is nothing but i f e ds, uh, cosine of uh, zero degree. So this one is uh, one. Okay, so uh, so we can just uh, ignore this term. And then, oh. okay, so um, let's see. Okay, so, um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, so E is uniform, E is uniform, uh, from this point to there. So it's just like integrating a, a constant, integrating a constant. So integrating a constant is just like minus E times the distance is, uh, from this point to this point is, uh, D. So we have minus E D. So very simple, very simple one. Okay. Okay. So next, uh, we have question B. So now they'll find the potential difference Vf minus Vi from this point to this point and to this point. So from I to C to F, from I to C to F. So let's calculate it like uh, Vc minus Vi for this path, for this path, which is negative from I to C, E dot DS. Yeah, I to C from, uh, yeah, e, e dot DS. So DS 
pointing to the right side, E pointing downward, which means that they are perpendicular, which means uh, we have a we have a negative I to C, E, E, S, but with cosine of 90 degree. So this one is uh, zero. This one is zero. So this is zero cost. And now we have from point C to point F. So we have a VF minus VZ. Similarly, we have an integration of uh, uh, E dot uh, DS. And then from, from C to F, from C to F. So this is a right, right angle triangle, right triangle. And this is 45 degree. So this is also 45 degree. And which means that this is D, this is D. This length is a square root of 2D. So just by uh, simply applying the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, okay. So next, uh, we consider, yeah, ES, ES pointing to the bottom left, E pointing downward. So the angle between them is 45 degree. So we have a C to F and then E, DS, cosine of a 45 degree. 45 degree is a square root of two over two, like this. So here, here, E dot DS from C to F. So still it is a constant. So we have negative E. The distance is from this point to this point, which is square root of two times D. So we have square root of two times D is the, is the distance. And then times this term is a square root of two over two. So turns out to be negative, negative ED minus ED. So finally, we would like to calculate VF minus VI, which is VF minus VC plus VC minus VI. So this is uh, minus ED plus zero, which is negative ED. Okay, so you see here, uh, from, from this point to this point directly with a straight line, this is negative ED. And if you go to go by another path, uh, I to C to F, so similar, uh, actually the same uh, final point and initial point, the potential difference is still the same. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So here we will try to uh, introduce yeah, something like this. Uh, so this is not difficult, so let me finish it. Now, and yeah, actually the electric potential difference between two points, I and F is, is this one. So this is the definition in the uh, two page uh, earlier. And now we will try to calculate the potential due to the charge particle, charge particle. So we assume that there is a charge particle Q here. It will generate E view of course pointing uh, our from this charge. We will try to see what is the potential, what is the electric potential generated by this small Q, by this small Q. Okay, it will be a scalar field, a, actually a potential, actually the electric potential, which is a scalar field. So we try to find this by uh, putting a test charge, uh, moving a touch, test charge from infinitely far away to here, and then we try to see, oh, for different uh, point, we we need uh, different uh, work. We need different work done by this uh, charge, and then we can try to calculate their their potential uh, difference. So actually, we know that E is pointing upward, generated by this uh, Q, generated by this Q or this point. And we will try to count ds as this is the this is the s axis. This is the s s s axis s axis. So rather than rather than moving from infinitely far away to to uh to this point, 
we move it from here to infinitely far away. So we choose this point to be initial point, and then we choose the infinitely far away as the final point. So we have this one to be out because uh oh not not actually not this point. Actually this this one. This is I. This is I, which is uh out from this charge. So we move it from out to infinitely far away. So we have we put out here and infinitely far away here. And we know that E, E and DS point to the same direction. So E dot DS is nothing but E. Uh, okay, actually this is this should be R axis, small R axis. So we put D R here. We put D R here. Okay. So we know that the E view, the E view generated by this charge is actually this one from chapter 22. You know that you know this expression. Okay, so we just put this expression into here. Just put this expression into here. So Q, 4 pi epsilon naught are all constant, are all constant. So we can just put it out and R square D out. So just live inside. We do this uh, single variable integration, which is not difficult, which is not difficult. Okay. And we also assume that the electric potential at infinitely far away will be zero, usually, usually defined like this. Uh, but yeah, there may be some exceptional case, but usually, usually we'll consider the potential at infinitely far away will be zero. And the uh, point here, initial point here, uh, initial point here, actually here, uh, we will like to find the potential, uh, the electric potential at this point. So we make it like V. So zero minus V here. Okay. So we just plug E into here. So we get this term. And this is pretty easy. It is like integration of R in to infinity and then R to the negative two power D R. So this power added one minus two plus one over minus two plus one like this. And then evaluate from capital R to uh, infinity. Something like that. So we have one over R, which is R to the negative one power. This one. And then we have a negative sign to cancel this negative sign. So we have a positive sign here. Okay, so it looked like this, and then we evaluate it at uh, infinity and out, and then subtract them. So we and we sub, uh, substitute infinity to here, it is zero. If we put in capital out here, it's capital out. So, so finally, it's just like, um, it's just like a uh, negative Q over four pi epsilon naught times one over capital out, something like that. And solving for we and switching out to small r, uh, to small r, yeah, just a variable. So it doesn't really matter is capital letter or small letter. So finally, we have negative v equals negative q over four pi epsilon naught times one over r. So we finally have v equals one over four pi epsilon naught q over r. So we have another expression similarly. Yeah, if you still remember the Coulomb force, we have Q1, Q2 here and R square here. If we have uh, for electric field, we have only Q over R square. For electric potential, we only have Q over R. And later in this chapter, you also have the potential energy, which is Q here, but oh, sorry, Q1, Q2 on top and then only R here. <laughs> So there are totally four combinations. We have two terms, two terms, uh, one term, two terms, two terms, one term, and one term, one term. So in this case, it's one term, one term. Okay. You may feel confused why we really need to define, uh, this is, this VI is, uh, is here and then final part is, is in finite far away. If we switch it, uh, it may be very easy to to have a an, an 
additional negative sign. <laughs> so this is uh, very tricky. You need to do the uh, line integral very carefully so that uh, in order not to have an additional minus sign. But making it like this will be will be straightforward. And then all oh, you may feel like oh why we need to find all my negative v equals to negative this value. Uh, yeah, if we if we just uh, reverse it, uh, you you will very easy to to have a an additional negative sign. So the textbook just uh derive it like this way. Okay, so this is the potential, and yeah, and here we still have this one. We, if we try to find, uh, if we try to find, uh, if we have more than one charged particle in the space and we try to find the total electric potential generated by all the charges, then we can calculate it one by one, just like before. But the difference part is that the potential is a scalar, is a scalar field, or at a point it is just a scalar. Then, if you just add them together, you don't need to uh, come up with the vector sum because for vector sum, you uh, usually need to decompose it uh, uh, to different axes, just like uh, x-axis component and y-axis component. And then you add all the x-axis component together and all the y-axis component together to get the whole uh, vector. But here, uh, potential difference or potential is just a scalar. You just regard it as a number. Actually, it's a number, and you just add them together. It is uh, much easier to to calculate. So we don't need to consider the the directions. So this is the point why we need to define the electric potential. So a positive charged particle produces positive electric potential. A, a negative charged particle produce negative electric potential. <laughs> so it is uh, just a rule. So let, let me finish this part uh, quickly. And then we have a break. So here, uh, we have two charged particle, two proton, which means that both are positive, both are positive uh, charge. And at point P, at point P, so when the arrangement uh, according to the net electric potential produced at point P by protons, greatest first. Okay, so it asks you uh, for part A, part B, part C. Uh, at, po at point P, uh, which, which uh, potential energy is the, which is the largest? Uh, potential for part A, part B, part C. Okay, so for electric field, if, if I consider it the electric field, it is like uh, E and E pointing to the same direction and E and E pointing to uh, different direction. Uh, and here, actually pointing to the opposite direction. So this one will add up. This one will cancel. This one will be somehow lie between. So when we consider the electric field, the magnitude of the electric field, part A will be larger than part B, will be larger than part C. But for electric potential, we only consider the difference between this point and this point. So we have small d and capital D, small d and capital D, small d and capital D. So in in, in the point of view of the electric potential, they are all the same, same potential, same potential for uh, A, B, and C. But if we consider the electric field, the magnitude, the magnitude of E field, then A will be larger than B, will be larger than C. So these are the difference. Okay. So we just have a 